Hi, I'm Raval. I got a request to do a video on complexity buckets. So today we're going to be doing estimating stories with complexity buckets. Prerequisite. To fully comprehend this tutorial, please watch my Agile Scrum training series. The first video is what is Scrum. There should be a link in the description below or an annotation on screen. Just click that and watch that first. So what is a story? A story is a short, simple description of a feature told from the perspective of the person who desires a new capability. A story is broken up into subtasks. So here's an example. Let's say I'm a user and I would like to see all the products in a category. So I would like to click on a button and I'd like to see all the products. That is a short, simple description from the perspective of a person who wants the new feature. So story points. Each story requires story points to be assigned to it. We will use these story points to calculate our velocity. Now I've already discussed the importance of velocity and how we use it in the Agile Scrum training series. So please take a look at that first and you'll understand why we need velocity. It's very important. So let's set the scene. Let's imagine that you and your team are sitting in the backlog refinement meeting. Remember, this is where the team discusses each PBI in the backlog. We will then assign story points using the complexity bucket method. Each team member will give their opinion on how many story points each story actually needs and the majority vote rules. So let's take a look at the complexity buckets method. So you can see there's four blue boxes representing four separate categories. In the bottom, there's various bucket sizes. So one, two, three, etc. And in the bottom right, there's an example. So let's run through this example. So here is my story. As a customer, I want to browse the list of products. So what does the user want to do? Or the customer, the customer wants to see all the products maybe in a category or just all the products in your shop. So as a developer or a designer, what you would need to do is look at the, each category and give it amount of points. So let's take this example. So you know as a cu uh, the customer wants to see all the products. So let's go first, user interface. So in order to, for the user to see all the list of products, what would they do? They would need a page template to show all the products yep they may need um, you know changes to navigation and other page templates so I would give that two so over here it says user interface M equals two great so let's take a look at business logic the next category well we are just going to be pulling data from the database it's just going to be a list of products a simple query there's not going to be any processing done here, any business logic. So let's give it NA. So in the bottom right, you will see business logic equals NA. Let's move on to the next uh, category here, data integration. So what needs to happen is we need to get a list of products. And a simple query, seems simple enough, get data uh, from the database and show it in the view. So data integration will be one. Just in the bottom, we have testing, L, uh, sorry, data, L equals one. Let's move on to the testing category. So um, what were we doing? We are pulling all the, all the products from the database. All we need to do is make sure that the, product, the data is being pulled and it's accurate. So as a developer, you say, you can put up your hand and say, okay, I'm gonna say total is four points. That's actually between three and five. So it's going to sit in the medium large bucket so number five, I'm going to give it five story points. Um, your team will then continue to vote. Some people may give it three, some may give it five. And you know what? I want to change mine. I feel that in testing, it may not actually be one. It may be two because not only are we going to be testing the data coming back from the DB, but we also will have to do cross-browser testing on the page templates themselves. So that's an extra level of testing that needs to be done. So I'll be giving it two, but 
So it'll go from four to five, but again, that will still sit in the medium large, but it's something to consider. You should bring it up when you're speaking to the team. So if the team didn't come to majority rule, of course, you'll discuss it and bring up stuff just like what I did now, and your team will come to a consensus and you can say, okay, it's going to be five. So that's how you use complexity buckets. Um, this system was introduced to me by a developer I worked with and we found it great, but we also found out that there may be one category that is not, it's not here, but we definitely need it. And here's our version. It's pretty much exactly alike. The only difference is if you notice in the left, there's a research category. And the reason why we prefer to have a research category is the following. The system that we were working on at the time was an inherited system. So we were working for a client who uh, you know, already had a system and we needed to uh, develop new features and perform maintenance. Now, if we don't know how the system works, if we haven't seen, you know, they, they, there was thousands of files and you physically are not going to know what every file does. Even working on it for a year, you're not going to know line by line what each, what everything does. So if you got a task like the one to list all products, they could already be methods that list stuff, but, you know, it's just not in use. And, um, you know, if without researching, you're not going to find that out. So more complex tasks can require um, more complex research and um, that's just the development side as a designer you know if you got a task that say it uh, says list all products and you have to create a page template that lists all products what you would want to do is research how maybe how amazon lists all their products or maybe how ebay lists all their products there is some level of research involved so you can apply uh, as many story points as you want and uh, to this research section but we believe that it was very vital to keep into our process and I'll whoever I introduce this method to I will recommend to add a research category so that's how complexity buckets work that's how I use them I hope this video helps you and your team and uh, if you have any questions please leave them in the comments below and remember to like and subscribe thanks for watching